All right, great. So my name is Peter Bayless. I'm a grad student in the AMP Lab, and today I want to talk about fast and scalable distributed databases. So if we look at big services today, say the Twitters of the world, when users perform actions, say our user here follows Justin Bieber, this follow action has to go somewhere. And we, when we look at the collection of services that makes up a website like Twitter.com, this follow action essentially flows through many of them, but it ends up in a database system. Moreover, industry best practices tell us that these front-end services should all be stateless and horizontally scalable. They're pretty easy to actually run and reason about. Whereas many of the difficult problems of distributed systems are pushed to this back-end database layer. We have to handle concurrent access to data, have to make sure it stays present in, despite failures, and we have to make sure that we deliver correct query results. So when we have tons of user queries, how do we actually make sure the database stays in a good state? The classic answer is to use what I'll call distributed transactions. We'll essentially take each of these users' queries and run them essentially one after the other such that they're isolated from one another. So by isolating users, we provide correctness. And this works really well on a single site database system. But if we're running Twitter.com, we need a lot of databases to spread data across and also replicate across. And when this happens, we run into what I'll call the transactional scalability wall. Fundamentally, under worst case access patterns, if we provide these nice isolated semantics, in a local data center we cap out around 1,200 transactions per second per data item. In a multi-data center context, say replicating between Oregon and Virginia, we're looking at around 12 transactions per second per item. What's happening here, this is pretty bad by the way, is that transactions actually require coordination. If I'm in Virginia, you're in Oregon, we're touching the same data and we have to be isolated, one of us is gonna have to stall. And this scalability wall is fundamentally why many people have said that these, that these scalable but correct databases essentially are going the way of the dinosaur. We essentially can't scale these transactions out while maintaining good performance. So if there's this dichotomy between correctness and scalability in the popular conception of the way we run databases today, we want to challenge this and say, well, it's not really correctness versus scalability. The problem is really this transactional abstraction versus scalability. Our insight is that these transactions are sufficient for correctness, that is, isolating users is correct, but we don't always need that perfect isolation between users. Instead, we'll opt for what I'll call coordination avoidance, where instead we'll coordinate only when strictly necessary for application level correctness. This will give us correctness and scalability. Now, the secret behind how we're actually gonna decide when it's required to coordinate is that we'll ask applications for a specification, for essentially what we'll call invariants that say, uh, that describe valid states of the application. These invariants will determine when coordination is needed and how much of it is needed. So as an example of an invariant, if we're on Twitter.com, we might want the invariant that user IDs are unique, such that say Justin Bieber has one ID and I have a different ID. If we had the same ID, a user comes along and tries to follow Justin, might end up following me instead. This is a bad user experience. At a high level, the way that we accomplish this and the way that we decide if, if a set of invariants is coordination free is we essentially examine abstract executions of database states. So if we have a single database and we have multiple users that want to concurrently perform operations on it, we need to decide when it's safe for them to essentially branch multiple copies of this database and subsequently combine them into a valid database state. We can label the invariants as either coordination free or not, and those that are coordination free will ensure that correctness is always maintained over all copies of state, and moreover, at the end of the day, the database is essentially agree on a common value for each data item in the database. If this is a little bit of theory, we can actually apply this test to existing transactional applications. So we can label, say, very common invariants as either requiring coordination or not. Anything in red here, we know we have to coordinate because we have a necessary and sufficient condition. There's, there's no possible way that we could implement these in a scalable manner, whereas anything in green, we know it's okay. And briefly, we've essentially applied the techniques from the green to, say, tra challenging transactional workloads like TPCC. Oracle currently has the world record at 500,000 transactions per second. And when we implement them in a coordination-avoiding database prototype, we're actually able to scale it pretty well. So at 25 servers, we're almost as good as Oracle. Of course, since we're coordination-avoiding, we can continue to scale this workload. So indeed, as we scale from 25 servers to 100 servers, we find that we're not only able to match Oracle's performance, but essentially get three times the world record performance for this particular application. If traditional database systems suffer from coordination bottlenecks, we can get around these bottlenecks by actually understanding what applications require. Moreover, we can take these theoretical insights and actually build systems that actually scale under adverse conditions while providing correct behavior. Thank you for your time. I'm Peter Bayless.